Hey everyone, this is Dan Thompson with Wise Money Tools. And today I wanna to ask you a question about your kids. Do kids have confidence in their future? And do you think they're excited about opportunities that they may have? Um, are they even really looking at their future? You know, so much of what a young person knows is what they see and experience, and mainly from parents and even grandparents. As an example, my parents were hard workers but man, they could barely make ends meet. My dad had several jobs during my growing up years, mostly sales jobs, which were really tough. And when they were first married, he was a, what I call a wage earner, basically working nine to five, working at a frozen food packaging company. Some of his jobs were really tough businesses to be into. You know, for salespeople, it can almost be a revolving door for those kinds of companies, continually hiring and training with the hopes that maybe out of a hundred or so, they'll be able to you know, have one stick for the long haul. I think the only reason my, why my dad kind of stuck with it is because he didn't really have anywhere else to go. So growing up basically poor, <laughs> I realized somewhere along the way that I just didn't necessarily want to you know, grow up like that. And I didn't want my kids to have that same, that same feeling that I did growing up. So growing up basically poor, I realized somehow along the way that I really didn't want to be like that. So I grew up in kind of central California, and even though we didn't have any money, we were surrounded by people that did. One of the jobs I had was working for a home builder when I was like 16, and I was framing houses. I don't think I was supposed to do it at that young of an age, but anyway, I could tell that he was doing pretty well. And my dad had this good friend who owned a few car dealerships, and he too was very well off. So even though my parents lived paycheck to paycheck, well, actually for the most part, they had more bills at the end of the month than there was money left, and it was painful. But there were others around who were doing pretty well. So today, so many families live like that. They live paycheck to paycheck, barely making ends meet, maybe being able to save a little here and there, but not enough to ever have a comfortable lifestyle and certainly not a comfortable retirement. So how can that transfer to kids? Well, again, I really don't blame parents because it can be just as tough for them and the examples that they had generations before them. If you grew up and only seen your parents in a wage job and you've been taught your whole life to find a good job with a decent wage and that's kind of just what you do, and then hopefully maybe you can save a little money, maybe your company offers a 401k or even if you're lucky, a pension, and that's just kind of how life works. And for many, that's okay. Um, and for others, it's kind of settling. Kids can be so much more than they're often taught. We miss out on what they can bring to the world or their community when they don't reach for something more. Something uh, a little longer lasting, something more fulfilling, something that they can create wealth and financial freedom, and mostly something that they enjoy. Here's an interesting statistic. According to SHRM, which I have no idea who they are, but they did a survey and found that only 29% of employees are satisfied with their jobs and the opportunities that they might have for advancement. What's really interesting is that there's a high percentage of employees that really, they kind of like their job, but not so much the pay. And then there's some who like the pay, but not so much the job. The other choices that people have are to be some sort of an entrepreneur, or maybe open a business, or work for a company that has a high salary and great opportunities, but that's easier said than done, again, according to the stats. So is being an entrepreneur or business owner easy? Well, sometimes, <laughs> but as often the case, it's really not easy. And there's a lot of failure out there for sure. Wage earners, you know, the ones who clock in from nine to five that aren't all that happy and fulfilled, many feel like they're not utilizing their full scale of talents. Now, let me just say this. I am not disparaging wage earners. The world actually needs them, and there are plenty of happy people who go to work, earn their hourly wage, go home, and have no other worries, and that works for them. There's nothing wrong with that. However, financial freedom is really hard to come by. I've talked to plenty of wage earners over the past 
30 plus years to know that many of them just never thought that there was another way to make a living. It's kind of what they learned from their parents and their parents learned from their parents, all believing that life is about finding a good job, a fair wage, and working the rest of your life at that job. I think of two movies that depict this very well. Both of them happen to be movies about football players. The first one, little older movie, is called Rudy. It's about a kid who worked really hard and he finally was able to walk on to the Notre Dame football team. He came from a family where his dad worked in the mine to put food on the table every day. And for several generations, that's just what you did. You grew up, you went to work in the mines, you died, and your kids and grandkids followed in the same direction. The bright spot in their lives was that one of their own kind of broke the mold and made it to the Notre Dame football team and they were all so proud. It's like they were all living their dreams through Rudy. Then there's a movie that you might have heard of called Invincible. Great movie. The story is about Vince Papale who got a chance to try out for the Philadelphia Eagles and he actually made the team. And again, this is about a bunch of friends who meet at a bar on the weekends, who live tough lives, who ink out a living, all working wage jobs with really no hope to do better or worse than the rest of their friends. They kind of settled on the fact that this is their life. There are several comments in the movie that indicated they all feel this way, that they are just regular guys and the only bright spot in their life was to watch the Philadelphia Eagles. Anyway, Papali breaks the mold and everyone's so excited for him and once again, they get to live their dreams through him. Even his dad, typical wage earner, carrying his hard case lunch pail to work every day, riding the subways, working hard you know, at his hourly wage with no hope of becoming anything more. They were the first generation of immigrants and didn't have much hope than to just be a wage earner. Many of them were happy. So I'm not saying that this is a you know, horrible way of life because they can be happy, but it's just kind of sad because none of these guys really love what they do, but they've never either had or thought they had a hope to do anything better. This is what they've been taught, or worse, this is what they believe of themselves. This mindset can also trickle down to relationships in the family. When the main breadwinner is really not happy with their work and their job, that can often reflect on the entire family. And there can be, uh, you know, can be a source of conflicts and marriages, and it can become a miserable way of life. But with nowhere else to go, they kind of settle in and often live unhappy lives and never try to break free. Again, working hard, earning a living is a noble thing. It's not about the money as it is the mindset. I unfortunately didn't have a role model or a mentor telling me that it was possible to do anything or to be successful, that I could amount to anything I wanted to be. I looked around as a kid with hardly anything, good parents, and a dad who worked hard, but he was kind of like the parents of these football players. He'd almost given up on the better life. You simply worked hard and that was that. What I want to tell you kids is no matter what situation you're in, it doesn't have to be that way for your life as well. You can break the mold. We live in the freest economy in the world where millionaires and even billionaires are made nearly every day. And if that's what you want, you can certainly achieve it. And again, I'm not saying that money has to be the object. It does seem like our politicians right now are trying to take away a lot of those freedoms from us. But so far, there's still limitless opportunities. And again, it doesn't have to be about the money, but it's about doing what you love to do. That in and of itself can be worth stretching. Being able to go to the work every day with a smile on your face and be happy, that's huge. I mean, if you can do what you love and love what you do, and you can make money too, that's a win, win, win situation. Chances are, if you love what you do, so will your customers or so will your clients. I can't remember who said it, but I remember hearing it at a pretty young age, something like, if you help enough people get what they want, you'll get what you want in life. That's the free market. That's capitalism at its best. Serving, creating, building, and producing a product or a service that others want and need, that's how you find success in life. And if you help enough people get what they want, that will naturally get you the things that you want. 
If you don't serve and help others first, if you don't bring forth a product or a service that people want, you're never gonna find financial success. You know, we live in a political atmosphere right now where the wealthy are kind of vilified. But the truth is, if they did not build a product or provide a service that millions of people wanted, they wouldn't be successful. Why is Amazon, Apple, Tesla, Chipotle, and a thousand other businesses successful? Because they give us what we want. We made them billionaires. They didn't steal it. They gave us something we couldn't live without and we were willing to trade our dollars for it. I don't care what kind of life you grew up with, poor, middle class, rich, if you wanna be part of the American dream, you still can. I think of some very special people right now that I get to work with. They have some very interesting challenges, challenges that many of us will never have. I won't go into the details, but it isn't easy at times for them, yet they keep pushing through. What is amazing is this mother, she's a mother of four, she wants more for her kids. She wants them to have opportunities to find success. I know part of the challenge is breaking out of that job, the wage, the normal thing that you do. She has ideas and dreams, but no one to really help her solidify them and make them into reality. She wants her kids to be able to break out of that mold, if you will, but it's not easy when there really are no role models to show them. She's lucky. Her kids are still young, oldest ones are in high school, and it's certainly not too late. They actually can break free if they really want to. So how do you do that? How do you change the path that maybe your parents or your grandparents have walked before you? Well, the first thing to do is dream. <laughs> if you could do anything, what would you wanna do? Are you a creator? Are you a builder? Are you just a hard worker? Are you a good communicator? I mean, what are your talents, your strengths, your interests? What do you think about yourself? Have you ever thought about what you'd like to become or what you'd like to do? Are you thinking that the rest of your life you're just gonna have to be a wage earner and work the same job day in and day out and just do that the rest of your life? Are you willing to take some risks and don't worry if you fail? There are many who fear failing so much that they won't even try. And we've gotta push that myth aside and teach these young kids there's nothing wrong with failing. In fact, most of us who have any kind of success have failed. So let's get down to it. What do so many teenagers do today for their first job? For some, they go to the fast food chain or maybe the grocery store and they get their first minimum wage job. Okay, that shows some initiative and their willingness to work. And they may learn a skill or two, but this is not what they necessarily want to do in life. How about this? Suppose your son or daughter is thinking about becoming a, a doctor or a lawyer, a nurse, a dentist, a stockbroker, or some other profession. Why not spend the time as a teenager learning about those professions? Even learning about those professions that maybe you don't want to do. I mean, what good does the skill of flipping burgers do for you unless you want to flip burgers? So we have two businesses. I got this financial business where I help people create wealth. I help them do it safely and tax-free with some of the best income streams you can get. I also have a home building company. Now, if a young teenager were to come up to me and say that they were really interested in one of these two businesses, I'd be happy to have them hang around me for a summer, do some intern work and learn a few things. Even if all they did was learn that they don't want to be a financial advisor or a home builder, it was a good experience. Cross it off the list, move on to something else. Last summer, we had a senior in high school working for us. He picked up on our spreadsheet so quickly and fast became one of the best at our design. He'll likely work with us through college and then sky's the limit on what he can do. He'll have the skill and the knowledge to pretty much carve out his own way and work with us the rest of his life if he wants to. Who knows, he may find his niche before he even finishes college which you know, a lot of entrepreneurial minded kids do. Some of the most successful men and women in the world left college or even never went to college to pursue their dreams. College isn't always the answer. Finding your passion would be the first thing I would do. Well, you get the idea. I obviously could speak about this stuff for hours. 
I want kids to dream and not to settle for the nine to five if they have the ambition to make a difference. They can do anything if they have focus and desire. The world is really ready for them. I want so bad to help this mom and her kids that I was talking about. The first thing is to paint a picture of hope and success for them. You know, it's funny. I was talking with this mom and she too had a dream. She wanted to open a floral business. And I said, that's awesome. Let's see how to do that. The first thing we need to do is some research. Let's go talk to some others who are in that business. Let's see if we can find some things online and research and get all kinds of data that you need to get started in, the, in that business. We want to know what it takes to start up, the roadblocks, things to be aware of, and finally, how did the numbers work out? I mean, after all, we're trying to make a living at the same time. After all the scrutiny and reading, we found together that the startup has a few obstacles. The first, and maybe one of the biggest, was the trial and error of inventory. You see, the biggest loss for floral shops is the longevity of their product. Flowers are perishable. They have a finite life. If you order too many, you're literally going to be tossing money into the garbage. Order too little, and you may have lost potential customers that you can't sell to. This takes quite a while to dial that in. Then the location, the marketing, and gaining customer loyalty are factors in building the business as well. After all that, we looked at the numbers. And unfortunately, the average florist has a profit margin of around $50,000 a year. Not bad, but for the years it takes to build to that, ooh, pretty difficult. That seemed like a lot of risk for the reward. The good news is we did our homework first. She had something she would have loved doing, but the hours, the effort, the money, the investment needed didn't produce the results that she even needed to make it worthwhile. That's a good thing. Do your homework, eliminate some of those things that you think might be something you want to do. Next, we'll be talking about potentially a home-based floral business. It's an order as you go concept. And this way, customers can come to her and she can order as needed instead of keeping huge inventory. This isn't as easy to get off the ground, obviously, but you can control your inventory, working mainly with weddings and events where you can order as you need and don't worry about carrying a bunch of stuff. This might be a good model, but marketing and branding will be the key. Who knows where it's gonna go, but what I love is she's thinking and hopefully her kids are seeing that she's trying to break out of that mode. And they're gonna take advantage of opportunities and they're gonna make their own opportunities as well. This is a really fun thing to talk about and I love exploring ideas with these young kids. Kids, get out, go to work in places that you really are interested in. I think the most successful business owners would love to have a young person that they can help mentor. And if it doesn't work out or you don't like that business for some reason, awesome one less potential that you can cross off your list. And if you have a special talent like math or writing, or maybe you're bilingual, these are strengths that not everyone has and you should take advantage of those skills and go sell yourself to a potential career opportunity. You don't need to flip burgers necessarily. Go learn something valuable that will help you the rest of your life. I'm excited for you young teenagers. I wish I could do it again. Well, actually, I don't, but if I had to do it again, I would certainly do a few things differently. I'd get on the fast track of doing the things that I'd love to do, and that's exactly what I'm hoping that you'll do now. I help people grow their wealth safely and tax-free, and it's really remarkable. And I can show you how. Maybe that's something you'd like to do. Well, if you'd like to learn how to do that and see how we can build wealth and make it so that it's generational, go to my time trade link below. Choose the time and we'll talk. Feel free to make a comment below. And as always, please don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a video. Until next time, take care.